Botox. The first thing we're going to talk about is Botox. We're going to talk about some Botox. We're going to talk about some fillers. We're going to talk about uh, light-based energies, IPL, a little bit about lasers. And if I don't forget, we're going to talk about Latisse, which is just the new eyelash enhancer that uh, someone asked me to talk about, and I missed it the last session. So if I don't, someone remind me, and we'll run through it pretty quickly. It's pretty interesting stuff. Anyway, Botox is, um, Botox is a toxin, but it's been around for a long, long time. It's a very safe product. It's used uh, in muscle relaxation. It's been used for over 30 years in pediatric ophthalmology for muscle problems of the eye. And so you can imagine if they use it in little children, little tiny infants, it's going to be safe for us older folks. So it's a, a toxin, a protein, actually, that's derived from a bacterium. And obviously, too much toxin, you can kill people. But the quantities you have that we use medically are so small, they're very, very safe. Again, it's been around actually much longer than 17 years. Um, there's a pediatric ophthalmologist uh, here in town that's been using it uh, since the late 70s when he was at the University of California, San Francisco. And we started using it uh, probably about mid or late 80s, so for a bunch of years, 20-something years. Botox Cosmetic was approved in 2002 it doesn't mean we weren't using Botox, but Botox Cosmetic, which is exactly the same product, was approved back eight years ago for dynamic muscle problems here, here, and in other areas of the face. The lines of facial expression, that frown line, that angry line, as people will tell us, uh, when we try to focus, uh, we get that look. So. Over the years, as our skin thins, as our muscles work more and more and more, we f eventually crease. We crease our brow, glabella area, in between the eye area. And so with Botox, we, with a small amount of Botox and small injections, we can inject into it. The Botox works by interrupting the message as it goes from the nerve to the muscle. To make a muscle work, the brain has to tell that muscle to work. And to tell it to work, the, mu the message comes down the nerve and goes to the muscle. And it's translated. The translation of that message is done by a chemical called acetylcholine. So if we block that translation, if we block the release, then the muscle never gets the message to contract. So we inject here. And as I said earlier in the earlier discussion, we can inject in various locations. This is a standard area to inject for people that frown. And then people that raise their forehead frequently are having an accordion effect. They're pushing down with a muscle as well as pushing up with muscles. And so we modify this injection pattern depending on the patient. So not everyone's exactly the same. So with Botox, there's no real downtime. We inject it very quickly. Uh, it lasts anywhere from three months to, we've seen people last up to a year. Uh, we tell people that, uh, that we inject the first time to re-inject in three months, and then after three months, anywhere around six or eight months after that. So two or three times a year is maximum. And these are befores. Maximum frown, these are afters. So these people are trying to frown. And so you can see the, and as we get older and as we frown more, then that line gets more permanent. And it can be used in combination. You can use fillers, which we'll talk about in just a bit. Let's see, we're gonna go to, we go to IPLs, which is, let's see, how about that, yeah. Intense pulse light is uh, using light energy to correct skin abnormalities. Uh, lasers are basically very intense light sources. An IPL is a light source, but it's not as intense. Instead of using one wavelength of light, if you remember your physics, we use multiple wavelengths of light in using the IPL. And so 
this company, Luminous One, makes an IPL. There are about five or six companies that make IPLs. This is the one we have. And it's a photo rejuvenation. In other words, we're using light to rejuvenate the skin, to improve the skin. And it can treat rosacea, blood vessels. These are all blood vessels. Leg veins, we don't do. It doesn't work that well, but they think it does. Sunspots, brown spots on the face, neck, hands, legs, arms. So with the Luminous One, with an IPL, we can venture away from the face because its intensity isn't intense, so its ability to damage the skin is less. Whereas a laser, you have a very tough problem venturing away from the face. So necks, permanent hair reduction, actually the same company makes a hair removal laser that we have that's much better than this. So conceptually what happens is if you have a spot on your skin, a brown spot, blood vessel, laser energy goes down, treats that, and can also treat blood vessels depending on the setting. Ours is set up with a computer where you program it in and it gives you the pulses and the energies and all that that we need. So again, light is changed to heat energy and the heat energy is basically is the therapy. Before, forehead, sun damage, sun spots, brown spots, after. This is a chest, it's cleavage, nothing else. This is brown, it's treated after a treatment with IPL, so much better. And this is a fellow's face after four treatments, before and after, much better. Tone texture, and you can see also the lines through here are much better. Now they're gone, they're better. That's an added benefit, the photo rejuvenation, if you will. Blood vessels on the face, the rosacea flush, the rosacea blood vessels before and after, three treatments. Treatments are usually spaced about four to six weeks apart. Can be longer. Again, blood vessels, cheeks, before, after, two treatments. And there's still some blood vessels. We see them, and then you can go back and treat those. The, the nice thing about an IPL, there's very little downtime. There's not a crusting, a char, an eschar, scab on the skin with an IPL. Lasers do produce crusting and scabbing. So the IPLs are non-ablative light sources. So many of the treatments for the skin have gone to non-ablation versus ablation. Non-crusting versus crusting. Not, not much downtime at all versus downtime. Hands with brown spots on the skin. Some of us have them, some of us don't. We, but again, on the face from sunshine, before and after. Again, the forehead before, you can see all the, what we call lentigenes or sunspots, liver spots, people call them, and after. It's hard for creams or lotions, bleaches to get that. It just doesn't, you can buy them over the counter, you can buy them prescription. It's just hard to, to make that work, even after months and months and months. And people do need the sun protect. If they get them, they got them from the sunshine, and that's genetic, their skin type, and they can't change. We don't change skin types, but we can change habits. Before and after, browns as well as reds. And before and after. Well, that's IPL. That's light-based energy. We'll come back to another light-based energy uh, in just a bit. But now we're going to go through some fillers. Fillers are, the history of fillers go back to 1982 when collagen was first uh, approved. And that filler was used for about 20 years before these other fillers came into the marketplace. The downside to the collagen products, the Zyderm, the Zyplast, were they were very transient, very temporary. Three to six months maximum. And sometimes six months was on outside. These fillers last a minimum of six months. They've been FDA approved at six months but some of them last up to two years, and some of them even a little bit longer. So it's a natural, it's not an animal protein where the old fillers were animal-based proteins. These are not. Hyaluronic acid is not an animal-based, so it can be used in wrinkles, folds, nasolabial folds, smile lines, frown lines, all these different areas. And we'll show you some pictures in just a minute. So, Restylane is used in these, they'll say it lasts about six months, but we've seen it last much longer. My nurse, who we injected, she was our guinea pig, lasted up to two years before we re-injected we re her. 
And these are some before and afters. Before, after. Before and after. I think this is three syringes of... So the lines are still there a bit, but they're much better. Some recent studies have shown that Restylane Juvederm, which is another product by another company, acts as a lattice work where collagen can come be incorporated on that. And if that's true, then that's some of our longer activity for these products comes from. Perlane is just a heavier molecule. It's a larger molecule used for deeper folds, deeper lines, um, scars, same company, just a heavier product. And again, you can use it on wrinkles around the face. Most of all these fillers are used in the facial area, not in other areas of the body. Um, let's see. We do a lot of lip defining. Uh, we can use it in acne scarring. We don't, I don't like full, I like people have natural lips, whatever their lips are naturally. I don't like to blow up lips. I don't do it. I send them to somebody else to do it. Um, but that's just me. I've been doing this 30 years and so I can do that. I can tell people that that's not something I do. I just don't uh, do that. So, But it's done. People, the plastic surgeons will use fat also to enhance lips. So they transfer it from one area of the body to the other as well as the face. As we age, our face gets thinner, we lose fat, and fat goes to other parts of our body. Disgusting, yeah. Just happens. Anyway, this is perlane before and after. Just a heavier molecule. Sculptra is a newer one. It's a polylactic, as you see, polyalactic acid, a non-anogenic. In other words, you don't have to be skin tested to this product. It is a volumizer. It's for people as we get older, we lose that fat. You can volumize with this. <clears throat> You'll see some interesting pictures. So this is just as we age, what happens? You know, we get sagging, we get loss of volume here, loss of volume here, loss of volume here. And these are all the places that you'll see that sculpture can be used. Again, we're, the perfect filler is one that has no side effects, lasts forever, and is cheap. There is no perfect filler. None of them are cheap, none of them last forever. The only thing that ever lasts forever was silicone, and I won't even go into that history. So, one of the things I think the sculpture people will al always say is combination therapy. Sculpture is a deeper volumizer. Well, if you have volume problems, you're going to have other problems. And so to enhance that, other products, be it Botox, be it laser, be it fillers, Thermage is a fractional laser that we're going to talk about from a diff different angle in just a bit. Chemical peels, we won't say much about chemical peels, but we still do some chemical peels, uh, not as many as we used to because we have these other modalities now. Treatment areas for sculpture, temples, under eyes, cheeks, jaw lines, chin, where we lose volume here as we age. These are all the areas that sculpture can be used. Before and after. Now, do you believe all that? I don't know. I think something else may have been done, too. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? I think it is. This is not my patient. These are the sculpture folks. But anyway, three treatments, four weeks apart. Volume lost, volume replaced. And you can see the jawline angle right there is so much better. And picked up. This is before... And finally, so here volume, younger person, less volume problems, but still some. And I suspect they use some here in the temple areas too, if you look closely. Before and after, wow. So jawline, angle, reestablished, volume, volume through here, volume in the cheek, that's all lifted up. Again, Sculptor's a deeper volumizer. It's layered in. This is before and after. Fillers. Before and after. 
A lot of sun damage, and I'm not sure some other procedure, chemical peel or something, wasn't done on that surface. Because again, sculpture's deep. Before and after. I think some combination therapy. A younger person before and after. It shows up better on my screen than yours. And a fellow. And you see the, the guys with deeper, not, he's really outside of the nasolabial, and this is probably his sleep side, but he's lost volume here, so it drops here, and so you volumize through there, and it lifts it up. So, sculpture combinations work well. Juvederm is um, very similar to the Restylane Perlane that we were talking about. We'll go through it real quickly, and then we'll get over to uh, Latisse, which we missed last time. Nasolabial folds, lips, out here eyes, the smile lines of the parenthesis lines. Juvederm came to the market about three years after Restylane came to the market. So when people ask me, do I use Juvederm, I'd use it a little bit, but we've had Restylane so long that I principally use Restylane and Perlane. When I, when I choose one of the two fillers. It's just personal choice, and they were out there before, and I've used a lot of it. So Juvederm says they last at least six months up to a year, so does Restylane. Juvederm's cost is just about the same as Restylane. And again, there's no downtime to this type of filler. So it does volumize to a certain degree, not near as well as Sculpture, but Sculpture is a much deeper injection. The hyaluronic acids, the Juvederm, the Sculptures, the Perlanes, the Juvederm Plus, attract water. They fill with their molecule, but they attract water. So if you're attracting water, you're filling with that natural attraction. And again, non-animal base, so the old collagens were cowhide base. They just took cowhide, took the protein, cleaved it, cut it up, and made it look like human collagen. That's as close as they could get. These are not animal products. Again, t various types of Juvederm, the Ultra, the Ultra Plus. Ultra Plus is just 20% thicker for deeper folds. Again, two companies competing to, with the same type product. As far as nerve blocks can be used before it's injected, we use a topical anesthetic about an hour before that works real well. Uh, my nurse will say, and she described it as when it's injected, it's like a sparkler. If anyone ever played with a sparkler when they were kids and it popped you on your hand. She says it feels like that. Most of our patients tolerate it very, very well. Now the men don't tolerate it quite as well as the ladies, but the ladies are always a little bit more stoic and tough. Various techniques to inject it. We use a, a serial, serial puncture, just multiple little punctures instead of a threading. I just, it works for me. I think that's operator driven. I'm the operator. So afterwards, there's really no downtime. We don't want people out in the sun a lot. We don't want them drinking a lot. We don't want, they want them to massage the area. So if they just, no real downtime, basically. So here's some photographs befores and afters. Before and after, the nasal labial or the smile lines. And softened it, and a little fill here that was put in. And before and after. Sleep side, not sleep side. If you look in the mirror, you're going to find out what side you sleep on. We all do it. Most of us do it. Ultra pulse laser is a CO2 laser. These lasers fry the surface of the skin. They, they produce crusting. They produce damage. And it's supposed to be controlled damage. A CO2 laser was developed back in the 80s, and it just fried the whole skin. Well, they, then they realized, well, that's not good. What else can we do with this laser? Well, they can pulse it, this ultra pulse. It's, it's ultra fast pulse, on off. Well, if you on off a laser, you have a relaxation time. If you have blood vessel relaxation, you have healing times better. So, and then they fraction, they basically produce, let's get to it there. This is the continuous wave, this is a pulse wave. So a pulse wave goes down deeper, but it's a smaller column of damage. 
Imagine this is the surface of the skin. So if we damage this big area, it takes a lot longer to heal. And now with the fractional treatments, imagine that we're gridding. We have a grid, an on, off, on, off, on, off. So every one of these is not a treatment zone. So you have rapid healing. You can work on scars. You can work on lines. You can work on all sorts of things. But it is a downtime of anywhere from seven to 10 days before and after. Brown spots, which you can get with other things. The IPL will get all those, but the IPL won't go this deep to produce this smooth skin. And it's hard to see these acne scars are better afterwards, but she was in for a seven to 14 day healing period with crust, with oozing, with all those things. So it's a much more aggressive. Around the eyes, periorbital, you can see before, this is before, this is after. So much better. And around the mouth, the lines around the mouth, before and after. We use a lot of fillers around here. Ladies will say their lipstick runs. It gets in a line run. And I don't volumize lips, I can, but I can define the lip margin better. We can help with that. So that's the CO2 laser. And I think we have one more thing I want to show you real quickly. And I'll be done. Latisse. I don't know if you ladies have ever heard of Latisse. Latisse, um, this drug by Metaprost was a gla open glaucoma, open angle glaucoma eye drop. And what the eye doctors found was that it helped the eyelashes as they thin, helped them grow back. And let's see, this is a mistake where it says let me point this out. Right here, normally antigen phase, which is the growing phase, is one to two months, it's one to two years. And so what Latisse does, it pushes more into this growing phase. And so it's applied to the eyelash margin, upper eyelash margin, every night. And in eight weeks, 50% of the patients saw results. 16 weeks, 78% saw results. And we'll quickly get to some pictures to make you believers. The eyelashes get longer, darker in about 78% of the people. And I'm going to tell you a secret in just a second. We'll let you look at that. That's a graph which I don't like. I'm a picture guy. There we go. All right. Zero, 16, zero, 16, zero, 16. Just look at those for a second. Now, if you quit using Latisse, your eyelashes are going to gradually go back to where they are. Latisse is not inexpensive. When you get a prescription for Latisse, or if the doctor sells it out of the office, which we don't do, it comes with 60 applicators, one for the upper eyelid on the right, one for the left, because they, in their study, they didn't want you cross-contaminating from one eye to the other. If you don't have an eye infection, and I have patients that use one of the applicators, and they use it very sparingly, so a bottle of Latisse that would last them a month now and last them at least two months and sometimes longer. So you can half your cost if you use it sparingly and still have the same positive effect. So for people with very thin eye eyelashes, Latisse is something new. It's, it's non-surgical, obviously. And it's a pretty cool product. Our patients that have used it really are, are excited about it. And very safe. Uh, low incidence, less than 4% of the people get irritated. Uh, hyperpigmentation, a little darkening along the lid margin has happened. We hadn't seen much of that at all. And again, it, it originally was an eye drop for open angle glaucoma. So very safe with that. It was approved just over a year ago. And again, what if patients stop using Latisse, it'll gradually fall out weeks to months. It's more like months. And again, before 8, 12, and 16 weeks. And you can see. And I've seen some that are very impressive. All right. Questions? Yes, ma'am. If you're a glaucoma suspect, should you be using stuff like Latisse? I would ask my ophthalmologist. I don't think there's a problem because you're using it so small, you're really not getting it in the eye. If you're using that much, you're probably going to run out of money quick. So you should use it very sparingly. So you try up in the eye, 
Right, it's for the lid margin, right where the eyelashes come into the eyelid. And it's supposed, by definition, by FDA study for the upper eyelids alone. I have patients that use it upper and lower. But again, they're off-label using it. I'm only telling you what other patients have told me in their use and they're sparingly using it and reducing the cost significantly. And I can't tell you exactly what it costs. I don't sell it, but it's not cheap. It, I would suspect $100, $120, but I was going to call the pharmacy this morning and I forgot, so I apologize. Yes, ma'am. I have two questions. Can you use a Latisse for your eyebrows? I can't answer that. It's never been used, and I don't have any patients that have tried that. Decrease the amount of skin? Yeah. No, I tell again, no ma'am, once you move off the face with a true laser, you know, like the ultra pulse laser I was showing you, your risk of scarring goes way up. It's a very aggressive laser and principally is used on the face. Yes, ma'am. Well, sun protection. You're a darker skinned person, so sun's not as big a problem to you. Most of these wrinkles that we showed you with Botox are dynamic wrinkles. Lines of facial expression, people that frown, that squint. You know, when I, when I look at you, I want you know, to focus. And so, or, you know, one of my daughters has got a very mobile forehead. You know, she's very expressive and she's constantly taking that forehead and going, rah, rah. she's 32 and she, you know, could she use Botox? Yes, have we? No. You know, because she hadn't bugged me enough. But yeah, you know, it's, it's for, for true lines like that, you know, quit smiling, quit frowning. You know, truly, quit squinting. Wear sunglasses for these. You know, always wear sunglasses that wrap around. The ophthalmologist, I don't know why it took them so long to realize that cataracts are probably caused by too much darn sun. And so they recommend polarized sunglasses that do wrap around, that give you sun protection. But that's also going to protect your skin and prevent you from squinting so much. Yes, ma'am. They're very safe, yeah. Botox. Yeah, and that's why I started off by saying Bot Botox was originally developed in pediatric ophthalmology. Um, the, the units that, uh, the fellow that's in the building with me is a pediatric ophthalmologist. He is the guy that brought Botox to Baton Rouge in pediatric ophthalmology. Uh, he's traveled the world, he teaches all over. Uh, he's really a laid-back guy. No one really knows, you know, how impressive he is. But when he uses Botox, they use units more than I use on adults. And he's injecting into the muscles of eyes of, of kids, little kids sometimes, tiny ones. So it's a very safe if used properly. The only bad things that we've ever seen been in the paper when the, the guy in Florida that injected millions of units and paralyzed millions of units and we're talking 10 to 20 units so that's tremendous safety factor again one of the things I, I think that before you do anything or think about doing anything uh, my push today is to make sure you check the credentials of who's doing it um, if you want a doctor to do it get a doctor that's qualified I wouldn't have a PA do it. I wouldn't have a nurse practitioner. Nothing against them. I'm sure they're very qualified. This is just me. But, you know, if a plastic surgeon, an ear, nose, and throat doctor that does a lot of plastic stuff, dermatologists that are trained, this is our realm. I don't think it's the realm of, you know, other doctors. But they make it their realm. They've ventured off into it, and that's their business. But, you know, just check out someone's credentials no matter what's done. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I wish that I could tell you there was something good for stretch marks. <laughs> if there was, we probably this whole room and I, we could have our own island. Uh, but they, the laser people say their lasers work, and I've not seen it. I'm going to a meeting in five days, and that's something we'll look at. Big meeting. It's an international meeting down in Miami, our biggest meeting with probably 7,000 dermatologists and all the vendors that want to sell their products. 
it's a technical and a professional meeting, but I've not seen any creams, lotions, lasers, or anything that's, that I can say, yeah, I got it. I, I wish I did, but it's just not there yet. And, but they'll tell you it's there, you know, the laser people, but I, I, I haven't seen it. What about prevent, like preventing it, like during pregnancy? Again, a stretch mark is strictly a fracture of an elastic tissue fiber. It's in the second layer of the skin. Imagine taking a pair of shorts or boxers or underwear and fracturing that elastic. Now I fractured it and I gave it back to you. Can you fix it? So I know hope? Well, no, I think, <laughs> I, I hope there is hope. If we can regenerate elastin, if we can regenerate, regenerate that elastic tissue fiber, what the lasers that I've seen have done is just produce a scar. And, and when you run a laser, one of these true lasers over an, a stretch mark, a stria as we call them, it contracts it. It takes one that's you know, this wide and makes it this wide. Well, it makes it a little bit less, but is it really doing anything other than tightening those collagens or producing a scar down there? And that's what I think is happening, and I'm not really impressed with it yet. Yes, ma'am. Is there any proof of having Botox and lotions, like advertised, and paper? And Botox and lotions? Yeah, I don't think it would be stable. Now, the, the, um, when Botox was first approved, uh, and before it was approved, the indication, the, the technical thing, it comes in a frozen crystallized form. And when we get it, we reconstitute it. And we inject it within an hour to hour and a half, and then we're done. Some people will reconstitute it and leave it in their refrigerator, and, but it starts losing its potency fairly quickly. So another thing you need to check on, how long has that Botox been in the refrigerator reconstituted? If it's been in there for a week or two weeks or three weeks, you know, your 10 or 20 units that you're getting are probably equal to about eight, maybe six. You know, it's losing its potency. But topically, no, I'm, you know. Is there anything else in there instead of Botox that would reduce the redness? Well, the fine lines, the tone and texture of the skin, you get into the topical retinase, the, the, uh, things like that that are prescription. They have, every cosmetic company sells something that they'll say will work. And it may have a little bit of effect, but not as effective as some of these other prescription things. Yes, ma'am. I wanted to ask you, what ladies can do, what happened to me, I went in the hospital, and under my eyes, and over my upper lip, was a spot of like, and it was really red, and I could see them. And then after that, they turned dark. I tried to use it over the counter. Well, there are bleaches to use for pigmentation. Sorry. They're bleaches, bleaching medicines that you could try. And some of the uh, very superficial peels may help that. But the first thing I would try was one of the prescription bleaches. There are some bleaches that are mixed up that uh, come combined with Retin-A. And there are two major bleaching agents, hyaluronic, I mean, um, hydroquinone and kojic acid. So you can combine those two. They're prescriptions. Ma'am? Bleaching, Triluma is one, Lustra is another, Epiquin is another. Those are all prescriptions. Yes, ma'am. Surgery. I'm not, I've not seen anything. There are a lot of companies out there that promote it, and, uh, and I've just not seen something that's consistent. Dark circles are usually genetic and blood-driven. Blood They're usually you know, the amount of blood flowing through those little capillaries. And I, I've not seen anything good yet that I'm comfortable with. Yes, ma'am. I have two questions. Some of those topical bleaching agents that you just I can barely hear you. I'm getting old. <laughs> the topical bleaching agents that you just mentioned, when you use them, do those brown spots come back? Well, they potentially can come back if you get out in the sun. And those, those pigmenting cells underneath those brown spots are much more susceptible to overacting, if you will, overreacting to the sun. And so if you really sun protect completely, you'll be fine. But you know, those spots obviously freckled up or browned up much quicker than the ones next door, and they're just more sensitive. So potentially, yeah, they can. And that's why we're big sun, you know, we're, I'm a fanatic about sun. I guess too much so because I gotta take vitamin D. I'm uh, vitamin D deficient, but. Are they, are, are they safe to use for long periods of 
They are safe. Uh, there's one called Triluma that has Retin-A and a cortisone in it that we limit the use to some degree. But uh, the other ones, the, the Lustras, Lustra Ultra, the Epiquins, the Kojic Acids are very safe for longer periods. Yeah, Retin-A has been around um, since the, the 70s, actually, for acne. In the mid-80s, it was found to reverse some of the damaging effects of sun and age. So Retin-A affects the epidermis. If you think of the skin very, very simply as um, like grass and dirt outside, as we age, our grass gets thinner and so does our dirt. What Retin-A does, it enhances the thickness of the epidermis more toward normal over a long period of time, and it also stimulates the collagen production by fibroblasts which get lazy once we get past about 40. Now that's genetic, you know, some people are older, some people are younger. So Retin-A or Retin-A-like molecules work in that way and they're very effective. They can be irritating and so we try to modify it with a moisturizing base, but they're, they're very good. Retinol is different. It's more foo-foo-y. All the cosmetic companies throw retinol and stuff. It may have a little bit of activity, activity but not the activity that Retin-A's and things of that nature have. Long term. It's a forever. It's, it's the marathon, not the sprint. Yeah, you can use it for a long, yeah, forever. Yes, ma'am. Do you deal with hair loss? We do. We do with hair loss and we deal with too much hair. We have a hair laser that gets rid of hair, so we, we work both sides of that street. Say again? Uh, topically, no. Rogaine's the best. Rogaine's topical minoxidil is the best uh, if it's a genetic loss. You know, if it's one that's a pattern loss that you inherited. And women, ha about 10 to 15 percent of the people that lose hair are females. You know, so it's, we, we used to call it male pattern baldness for everybody, then we called it androgenic, now we call it male and female. So now we're very uh, appropriate. But yeah, the Rogaine is the best, and then there are women that are out of the childbearing years that we use uh, an off-label use of um, Propecia on. But that's another story. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what's the average cost of a laser cost for um, treating acne scars? For what? But, uh, the laser, what's the average cost for treating acne scars using a laser cost? The Ultra Pulse laser is going to run up 1,500 to 2,000 treatment. Well, usually, hopefully, one treatment. Yeah. Thank you.